Topic: Historic overview. Topic: Secular French theater. Discussions about the origins of non-religious theater, théâtre profane, both drama and farce, in the Middle Ages remain controversial, but the idea of a continuous popular tradition stemming from Latin comedy and tragedy to the 9th century seems unlikely. Most historians place the origin of medieval drama in the church's liturgical dialogues and tropes. At first simply dramatizations of the ritual, particularly in those rituals connected with Christmas and Easter see mystery play, plays were eventually transferred from the monastery church to the chapter house or refectory hall and finally to the open air, and the vernacular was substituted for Latin. In the 12th century one finds the earliest extant passages in French appearing as refrains inserted into liturgical dramas in Latin, such as a Saint Nicholas patron saint of the student clerks play and a Saint Stephen play. Dramatic plays in French from the 12th and 13th centuries Le Jeu d'Adam written in octosyllabic rhymed couplets with Latin stage directions implying that it was written by Latin-speaking clerics for a lay public Le Jeu de Saint Nicolas, Jean Baudel, written in octosyllabic rhymed couplets Le Miracle de Théophile, Rudebeuf C. The origins of farce and comic theatre remain equally controversial. Some minus literary historians believe in a non liturgical origin among junglers or in pagan and folk festivals, others see the influence of liturgical drama. Some of the dramas listed above include farcical sequences and monastic readings of Plautus and Latin comic theatre. Non dramatic plays from the 12th and 13th centuries. La dit de l'herberie, Rudebeuf Courtois d'Arras, c. 1228 Le jeu de la foile, 1275 Adam de la Halle Le jeu de Robin et Marion, a pastorel, 1288 Adam de la Halle Le jeu du pèlerin, 1288 Le garçon et le vogel, 1266 to 1282 Earliest surviving French farce Acassin et Nicolette, a chantefable, a mixture of prose and lyrical passages, select list of plays from the 14th and 15th centuries. La farce de Maitre Troubert et Dantrongnard, Eustache Deschamps. La dit des quatre offices de l'Hostel du Roy, Eustache Deschamps. Miracles de Notre Dame. Bien avagé et mal avagé, morality, 1439. La farce de Maître Pierre Pathelin (1464–1469). This play had a great influence on Rabelais in the 16th century. Le Franc Archer de Bagnolet (1468–1473). Morality (1486). Henri Bode. Lum Pecher (Morality) (1494). La farce du Cuvier. La farce nouvelle du pâté et de la tartine The 15th century, the public representation of plays was organized and controlled by a number of professional and semi-professional guilds. Clerks de la Baisoche Paris, morality plays Enfants sans souci Paris, farces and sauties Canards Rouen. Confrérie de la Passion Paris, mystery place genres of theatre practiced in the Middle Ages in France. Farce, a realistic, humorous, and even coarse satire of human failings. Sati, generally a conversation among idiots. Sots, full of puns and quid pro quo. Pastoral, a play with a pastoral setting. Chantefable, a mixed verse and prose form only found in Acassin et Nicolette. Mystery play, a depiction of the Christian mysteries or saints lives. Morality play. Miracle play. Passion play. Sermon Joyeux, a burlesque sermon. Topic: <inaudible> Renaissance Theater. 16th century French theater followed the same patterns of evolution as the other literary genres of the period. For the first decades of the century, public theater remained largely tied to its long medieval heritage of mystery plays, morality plays, farces, and sodies, although the miracle play was no longer in vogue. Public performances were tightly controlled by a guild system. The guild, Les Confrères de la Passion, 
had exclusive rights to theatrical productions of mystery plays in Paris. In 1548, fear of violence or blasphemy resulting from the growing religious rift in France forced the Paris Parliament to prohibit performances of the mysteries in the capital, although they continued to be performed in other places. Another guild, the Enfants Sans Souci, was in charge of farces and sotis, as to the Clerks de la Baisoche, who also performed morality plays. Like the Confrères de la Passion, La Baisoche came under political scrutiny, plays had to be authorized by a review board, masks or characters depicting living persons were not permitted, and they were finally suppressed in 1582. By the end of the century, only the Confrères de la Passion remained with exclusive control over public theatrical productions in Paris, and they rented out their theatre at the Hôtel de Bourgogne to theatrical troops for a high price. In 1597, they abandoned this privilege. Alongside the numerous writers of these traditional works such as the farce writers Pierre Gringor, Nicolas de la Chesnay and André de la Vigne, Marguerite de Navarre also wrote a number of plays close to the traditional mystery and morality play. As early as 1503 however, original language versions of Sophocles, Seneca, Euripides, Aristophanes, Terence and Plautus were all available in Europe and the next 40 years would see humanists and poets both translating these classics and adapting them. In the 1540s, the French university setting and especially from 1553 on the Jesuit colleges became host to a neo-Latin theater in Latin written by professors such as George Buchanan and Marc Antoine Murat which would leave a profound mark on the members of La Pléiade. From 1550 on, one finds humanist theater written in French. The influence of Seneca was particularly strong in humanist tragedy. His plays, which were essentially chamber plays meant to be read for their lyrical passages and rhetorical oratory, brought to many humanist tragedies a concentration on rhetoric and language over dramatic action. Humanist tragedy took two distinct directions. Biblical tragedy, plots taken from the Bible. Although close in inspiration to the medieval mystery plays, the humanist biblical tragedy reconceived the biblical characters along classical lines, suppressing both comic elements and the presence of God on the stage. The plots often had clear parallels to contemporary political and religious matters and one finds both Protestant and Catholic playwrights. Ancient tragedy, plots taken from mythology or history. They often had clear parallels to contemporary political and religious matters during the height of the civil wars 1570-1580, a third category of militant theater appeared. Contemporary tragedy, plots taken from recent events along with their work as translators and adapters of plays, the humanists also investigated classical theories of dramatic structure, plot, and characterization. Horace was translated in the 1540s, but had been available throughout the Middle Ages. A complete version of Aristotle's poetics appeared later first in 1570 in an Italian version, but his ideas had circulated in an extremely truncated form as early as the 13th century in Hermann the German's Latin translation of Averroes' Arabic gloss, and other translations of the poetics had appeared in the first half of the 16th century. Also of importance were the commentaries on Aristotle's poetics by Julius Caesar Scaliger which appeared in the 1560s. The 4th century grammarians Diomedes and Aelius Donatus were also a source of classical theory. The 16th century Italians played a central role in the publishing and interpretation of classical dramatic theory, and their works had a major effect on French theatre. Lodovico Castelvetro's Aristote-based Art of Poetry 1570 was one of the first enunciations of the Three Unities. This work would inform Jean de la Tallet's Art de la Tragedie 1572. Italian theater like the tragedy of Gian Giorgio Trissino and debates on decorum like those provoked by Sperone Speroni's play Canacci and Giovanni Battista Giraldi's play Orbesh would also influence the French tradition. In the same spirit of imitation, an adaptation of classical sources that had informed the poetic compositions of La Pléiade, French humanist writers recommended that tragedy should be in five acts and have three main characters of noble rank. The play should begin in the middle of the action, in medias res, use noble language and not show scenes of horror on the stage. Some writers like Lazare de Baif and Thomas Sebillet attempted to link the medieval tradition of morality plays and farces to classical theatre, but Joachim du Bellay rejected this claim and elevated classical tragedy and comedy to a higher dignity. Of greater difficulty for the theorists was the incorporation of Aristotle's notion of catharsis, 
or the purgation of emotions with Renaissance theatre, which remained profoundly attached to both pleasing the audience and to the rhetorical aim of showing moral examples exemplum. Etienne Jodel's Cleopatra Captive 1553, which tells the impassioned fears and doubts of Cleopatra contemplating suicide, has the distinction of being the first original French play to follow Horace's classical precepts on structure the play is in five acts and respects more or less the unities of time, place and action and is extremely close to the ancient model, the prologue is introduced by a shade, there is a classical chorus which comments on the action and talks directly to the characters, and the tragic ending is described by a messenger. Melin de saint Gelles's translation of Gian Giorgio Trissino's La Sophonisbe, the first modern regular tragedy based on ancient models which tells the story of the noble Sophonisba's suicide rather than be taken as captive by Rome, was an enormous success at the court when performed in 1556. Select list of authors and works of humanist tragedy Théodore de Bise Abraham Sacrifiant 1550, Etienne Jodel Cleopatra Captive 1553, didn't say sacrifiant date unknown. Melin de Saint Gelais. La Sophonisbe performed 1556. Translation of the Italian play 1524 by Gian Giorgio Trissino. Jacques Grevin. Jules César 1560. Imitated from the Latin of Marc Antoine Murat. Jean de la Tolle. Saul Le Ferro 1563 to 1572. Robert Garnier. Porcy, published 1568, acted in 1573. Corneli, acted in 1573 and published in 1574. Hippolyte, acted in 1573 and published in 1574. Marc Antoine, 1578. La Troade, 1579. Antigone, 1580. Les Juives, 1583. Nicolas de Montreux. Tragédie du jeune Cyrus, 1581. Isabel, 1594. Cleopatra, 1594. Sophonisbe, 1601. See the playwrights Antoine de Montcristine, Alexander Hardy, and Jean de Chelindre for tragedy around 1600 to 1610. Alongside tragedy, European humanists also adapted the ancient comedic tradition and as early as the 15th century, Renaissance Italy had developed a form of humanist Latin comedy. Although the ancients had been less theoretical about the comedic form, the humanists used the precepts of Aelius Donatus 4th century AD, Horace, Aristotle and the works of Terence to elaborate a set of rules. Comedy should seek to correct vice by showing the truth, there should be a happy ending. Comedy uses a lower style of language than tragedy. Comedy does not paint the great events of states and leaders, but the private lives of people, and its principal subject is love. Although some French authors kept close to the ancient models Pierre de Ronsard translated a part of Aristophanes's Plutus at college, on the whole the French comedic tradition shows a great deal of borrowing from all sources, medieval farce which continued to be immensely popular throughout the century, the short story, Italian humanist comedies and La Celestina by Fernando de Rojas. Select list of authors and works of Renaissance comedy Etienne Jodel Léugine 1552, a comedy in five acts. Jacques Grévin, Les Ebahis 1560, Jean Antoine de Béif, Léunuc 1565, a version of Terence's Eunuchus, Le Brave 1567, a version of Plautus's Miles Gloriosus, Jean de la Tolle, Les Corvéus, published in 1573, an imitation of Boccaccio and other Italians. Pierre de Larivy, son of an Italian, Larivy was an important adapter of the Italian comedy. Le Lequet 1579. Le Veve 1579. Les Esprits 1579. Le Morfondu 1579. Les Gelots 1579. Les Escaliers 1579. Odette de Ternaba Les Contents 1581. Nicolas de Montreux, La Joyeuse, 1581. Joseph Le Chaste. In the last decades of the century, four other theatrical modes from Italy, which did not follow the rigid rules of classical theatre, flooded the French stage. The Commedia dell'arte, 
an improvisational theatre of fixed types Harlequin, Colombo, created in Padua in 1545, Italian troops were invited in France from 1576 on The Tragicomedy — a theatrical version of the adventurous novel, with lovers, knights, disguises and magic. The most famous of these is Robert Garnier's Bradamante 1580, adapted from Ariosto's Orlando Furioso The Pastoral — modelled on Giambattista Guarini's Pastor Fido, Faithful Shepherd, Tasso's Aminta, and Antonio Ingaro, Alcio, themselves inspired by Jacopo Sanazzaro and Jorge de Montemayor. The first French pastorals were short plays performed before a tragedy, but were eventually expanded into five acts. Nicolas de Montreux wrote three pastorals, Athlete 1585, Diane 1592, Aramine au le Burger (1597). The Ballets de Cower, court ballet, an allegorical and fantastic mixture of dance and theater. The most famous of these is the Ballet Comique de la Reine, 1581. By the end of the century, the most influential French playwright, by the range of his styles and by his mastery of the new forms, would be Robert Garnier. All of these eclectic traditions would continue to evolve in the Baroque theater of the early 17th century before French classicism would finally impose itself. <laughs> Early modern theatres and theatrical companies During the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, public theatrical representations in Paris were under the control of guilds, but in the last decades of the 16th century only one of these continued to exist, although less confrérie de la passion no longer had the right to perform mystery plays 1548, they were given exclusive rights to oversee all theatrical productions in the capital and rented out their theatre the Hotel de Bourgogne to theatrical troops at a high price. In 1597, this guild abandoned its privilege which permitted other theatres and theatrical companies to eventually open in the capital. In addition to public theatres, plays were produced in private residences, before the court and in the university. In the first half of the century, the public, the humanist theatre of the colleges and the theatre performed at court showed extremely divergent tastes. For example, while the tragicomedy was fashionable at the court in the first decade, the public was more interested in tragedy. The early theatres in Paris were often placed in existing structures like tennis courts, their stages were extremely narrow, and facilities for sets and scene changes were often non-existent, this would encourage the development of the unity of place. Eventually, theatres would develop systems of elaborate machines and decors, fashionable for the chivaleresque flights of knights found in the tragicomedies of the first half of the century. In the early part of the century, the theatre performances took place twice a week starting at 2 or 3 o'clock. Theatrical representations often encompassed several works, beginning with a comic prologue, then a tragedy or tragicomedy, then a farce and finally a song. Nobles sometimes sat on the side of the stage during the performance. Given that it was impossible to lower the house lights, the audience was always aware of each other and spectators were notably vocal during performances. The place directly in front of the stage, without seats, the parterre, was reserved for men, but being the cheapest tickets, the parterre was usually a mix of social groups. Elegant people watched the show from the galleries. Princes, musketeers and royal pages were given free entry. Before 1630, an honest woman did not go to the theatre. Unlike England, France placed no restrictions on women performing on stage, but the career of actors of either sex was seen as morally wrong by the Catholic Church actors were excommunicated and by the ascetic religious Jansenist movement. Actors typically had fantastic stage names that described typical roles or stereotypical characters. In addition to scripted comedies and tragedies, Parisians were also great fans of the Italian acting troupe who performed their Commedia dell'arte, a kind of improvised theatre based on types. The characters from the Commedia dell'arte would have a profound effect on French theatre, and one finds echoes of them in the braggarts, fools, lovers, old men and wily servants that populate French theatre. Opera came to France in the second half of the century. The most important theatres and troupes in Paris, Hotel de Bourgogne, until 1629, this theatre was occupied by various troupes, including the Comédiens du Roy, directed by Valerin Lecomte and, at his death, by Bellerus Pierre Le Messier. The troupe became the official 
Troupe Royale in 1629. Actors included Turlupin, Gros Guillaume, Gautier Gargouy, Florador, Montfleury, La Champmesle. Théâtre du Marais 1600 founded by Charles Le Noir and Monterey, this rival theatre of the Hôtel de Bourgogne housed the troupe, Vieux Comédiens du Roy, around Claude Deschamps and the troupe of Jodelet. La Troupe de Monsieur under the protection of Louis XIV's brother, this was Molière's first Paris troupe. They moved to several theatres in Paris the Petit Bourbon, the Palais Royal before combining in 1673 with the troupe of the Théâtre du Marais and becoming the troupe of the Hôtel Guénégo. La Comédie Française, in 1680 Louis XIV united the Hôtel de Bourgogne and the Hôtel Guénégo into one official troupe, outside of Paris, in the suburbs and in the provinces, there were many wandering theatrical troops. Molière got his start in such a troupe. The royal court and other noble houses were also important organizers of theatrical representations, ballets de cower, mock battles and other sorts of divertissement for their festivities, and in the some cases the roles of dancers and actors were held by the nobles themselves. The early years at Versailles, before the massive expansion of the residence, were entirely consecrated to such pleasures, and similar spectacles continued throughout the reign. Engravings show Louis XIV and the court seating outside before the Cower du Marbre, a Versailles watching the performance of a play. The great majority of scripted plays in the 17th century were written in verse notable exceptions include some of Molière's comedies. Except for lyric passages in these plays, the meter used was a twelve-syllable line the Alexandrine, with a regular pause or cessura. After the sixth syllable, these lines were put into rhymed couplets, couplets alternated between feminine, i.e. ending in a mute e, and masculine, i.e. ending in a vowel other than a mute e, or in a consonant or a nasal rhymes. <laughs> Baroque theatre French theatre from the 17th century is often reduced to three great names. Pierre Cornet, Molière and Jean Racine, and to the triumph of classicism. The truth is however far more complicated. Theatre at the beginning of the century was dominated by the genres and dramatists of the previous generation. Most influential in this respect was Veronese Flores. Although the royal court had grown tired of the tragedy preferring the more escapist tragicomedy, the theatre-going public preferred the former. This would change in the 1630s and 1640s when, influenced by the long Baroque novels of the period, the tragicomedy, a heroic and magical adventure of knights and maidens, became the dominant genre. The amazing success of Corneille's Le Cid in 1637 and Horace in 1640 would bring the tragedy back into fashion, where it would remain for the rest of the century. The most important source for tragic theatre was Seneca and the precepts of Horace and Aristotle and modern commentaries by Julius Caesar Scaliger and Lodovico Castelvetro, although plots were taken from classical authors such as Plutarch, Suetonius, etc. and from short story collections Italian, French and Spanish, the Greek tragic authors Sophocles, Euripides would become increasingly important by the middle of the century. Important models for both comedy, tragedy and tragicomedy of the century were also supplied by the Spanish playwrights Pedro Calderón de la Barca, Terso de Molina and Lope de Vega, many of whose works were translated and adapted for the French stage. Important theatrical models were also supplied by the Italian stage including the pastoral, and Italy was also an important source for theoretical discussions on theatre, especially with regards to decorum see for example the debates on Sperone Speroni's play Canacci and Giovanni Battista Giraldi's play Orbesh, regular comedies i.e. comedies in five acts modelled on Plautus or Terence and the precepts of Aelius Donatus were less frequent on the stage than tragedies and tragicomedies at the turn of the century, as the comedic element of the the early stage was dominated by the farce, the satirical monologue and by the Italian Commedia dell'arte. Jean Rotrou and Pierre Cornet would return to the regular comedy shortly before 1630. Cornet's tragedies were strangely untragic. his first version of Le Cid was even listed as a tragicomedy, for they had happy endings. In his theoretical works on theatre, Cornet redefined both comedy and tragedy around the following suppositions. The stage in both comedy and tragedy, 
should feature noble characters this would eliminate many low characters, typical of the farce, from Corneille's comedies. Noble characters should not be depicted as vile reprehensible actions are generally due to non-noble characters in Corneille's plays. Tragedy deals with affairs of the state wars, dynastic marriages, comedy deals with love. For a work to be tragic, it need not have a tragic ending. Although Aristotle says that catharsis purgation of emotion should be the goal of tragedy, this is only an ideal. In conformity with the moral codes of the period, plays should not show evil being rewarded or nobility being degraded. The history of the public and critical reaction to Corneille's Le Cid can be found in other articles. He was criticized for his use of sources, for his violation of good taste, and for other irregularities that did not conform to Aristotian or Horatian rules, but its impact was stunning. Cardinal Richelieu asked the newly formed Académie Française to investigate and pronounce on the criticisms it was the Academy's first official judgment, and the controversy reveals a growing attempt to control and regulate theatre and theatrical forms. This would be the beginning of 17th century classicism. Corneille continued to write plays through 1674 mainly tragedies, but also something he called heroic comedies, and many continued to be successes, although the irregularities of his theatrical methods were increasingly criticized notably by François Edelin, Abbé Daubignac and the success of Jean Racine from the late 1660s signaled the end of his preeminence. Select list of dramatists and plays, with indication of genre dates are often approximate, as date of publication was usually long after the date of first performance. Antoine de Montcristine C. Sophonisbe A. K. A. La Cathagenoise A. K. A. La Liberté Tragedy, 1596. La Reine de Cosse A. K. A. Lacosse's Tragedy, 1601. Amon Tragedy, 1601. La Bergerie Pastoral, 1601. Hector Tragedy, 1604. Jean de Chelindre, c. 1585 to 1635. Tier et Sidon, O les funnestes amours de Belcar et Melian, 1608. Alexander Hardy, 1572c.1632. Hardy reputedly wrote 600 plays, only 34 have come down to us. Skedes, O l'hospitalite violet, tragedy, 1624. La Force du Sang, tragicomedy, 1625. The plot is taken from a Cervantes short story. Lucrici, O l'adulter puni, tragedy, 1628. Honoret de Buel, Seigneur de Racan, 1589-1670. Les Bergeries, Pastoral, 1625. Théophile de Vio, 1590-1626. Les Amours Tragiques de Pyramé et Thisbe, tragedy, 1621. François Le Maitel de Bois Robert, 1592-1662. Didn't la chaste o les amours de Hierbas tragedy 1642 Jean Myrat 1604 to 1686 La Sylve pastoral tragicomedy C.1626 La Sylvanier o la morte vive pastoral tragicomedy 1630 Les galanteries du duc de son vice roi de Naples comedy 1632 La Sophonisbe tragedy 1634 La Virginie, Tragicomedy, 1636. Tristan Lermite, 1601 to 1655. Mariamne, Tragedy, 1636. Penthe, Tragedy, 1637. Le Mort de Senec, Tragedy, 1644. Le Mort de Crispy, Tragedy, 1645. The Parasite, 1653. Jean Rotrou, 1609 to 1650. La Bague de Lubli comedy 1629 La Belle Alfred comedy 1639 Laura Persicutte tragic comedy 1637 La Veritable Saint Genest tragedy 1645 Venceslas tragic comedy 1647 Cosros tragedy 1648 Pierre Cornet 1606 to 1684 Malite comedy 1629 Clitadry, tragicomedy, later changed to tragedy, 1631. Le Vieux, comedy, 1631. 
La Place Royale, comedy, 1633. Mayday, tragedy, 1635. L'illusion comique, comedy, 1636. Le Cid, tragicomedy, later changed to tragedy, 1637. Horace, tragedy, 1640. Cinna, tragedy, 1640. Polyote, Christian, tragedy, c. 1641. La Mort de Pompée, tragedy, 1642. Le Mentures, comedy, 1643. Rodagoon, Princess des Parthes, tragedy, 1644. Heraclius, Emperor d'Orient, tragedy, 1647. Don Sanche d'Aragon, heroic, comedy, 1649. Nicomede, tragedy, 1650. Sertorius, tragedy, 1662. Sophonisbe, tragedy, 1663. Othon, tragedy, 1664. Tight at Berenice, heroic, comedy, 1670. Serena, General des Parthes, tragedy, 1674. Pierre du Rire, 1606 to 1658. Lucrici, tragedy, 1636. Alcione, 1638. Scevola tragedy 1644 Jean Desmarets 1595 to 1676 Les Visionnaires comedy 1637 Aragon prose tragedy 1638 Scipione verse tragedy 1639 François Edelin Abbé Daubignac 1604 to 1676 Le Simon day 1642 La Pucelle d'Orléans, 1642. Cianobi, tragedy, 1647, written with the intention of affording a model in which the strict rules of the drama were served. Le Martyr de Saint Catherine, tragedy, 1650. Paul Scarron, 1610 to 1660. Jodelet, 1645. Don Jaffel d'Armeny, 1653. Isaac de Benserade, c. 1613 to 1691 Cleophatra tragedy 1635 Samuel Chapuzo 1625 to 1701 Le Cercle des Femmes au Le Secret du Lit Nuptial 1656 comedy prose Damon et Pythias au Le Triomphe de l'Amour et de l'Amitié tragedy comedy 1657 Armetzer au Les Amis Enemis tragedy comedy 1658 Le Riche Macontent au La Noble Imaginaire, Comedy, 1660. L'Académie des Femmes, Farce, in Verse, Paris, 1661. Le Colin Mallard, Farce, Comedy Facetious, Paris, 1662. Le Ver de Pay, au Lum de Pie, Comedy, Paris, 1663. Les Eaux de Permanent, 1669. Topic. 17th century classicism The expression classicism as it applies to literature implies notions of order, clarity, moral purpose and good taste. Many of these notions are directly inspired by the works of Aristotle and Horace and by classical Greek and Roman masterpieces. In French neoclassical theatre also called French neoclassicism, a play should follow the three unities, Unity of place, the setting should not change. In practice, this led to the frequent castle, interior battles take place off stage. Unity of time, ideally the entire play should take place in 24 hours. Unity of action, there should be one central story and all secondary plots should be linked to it. Although based on classical examples, the unities of place and time were seen as essential for the spectator's complete absorption into the dramatic action. Wildly dispersed scenes in China or Africa, or over many years would critics maintained break the theatrical illusion. Sometimes grouped with the unity of action is the notion that no character should appear unexpectedly late in the drama. Linked with the theatrical unities are the following concepts. Less bienseances. Literature should respect moral codes and good taste. Nothing should be presented that flouts these codes, even if they are historical events. La vraisemblance. Actions should be believable. When historical events contradict believability, some critics counseled the latter. 
The criterion of believability was sometimes also used to criticize soliloquy, and in late classical plays characters are almost invariably supplied with confidants valets, friends, nurses to whom they reveal their emotions. These rules precluded many elements common in the Baroque tragi comedy, flying horses, chivalric battles, magical trips to foreign lands and the deus ex machina. The mauling of Hippolyte by a monster in Phedre could only take place offstage. Finally, literature and art should consciously follow Horace's precept, to please and educate. Aut delectare aut prodesi est. These rules, or codes, were seldom completely followed, and many of the century's masterpieces broke these rules intentionally to heighten emotional effect. Cornet's Le Cid was criticized for having Rodrigue appear before Chamin after having killed her father, a violation of moral codes. Theatre under Louis XIV By the 1660s, classicism had finally imposed itself on French theatre. The key theoretical work on theatre from this period was François Hedelin, Abbé d'Aubignac's Préique du Théâtre, 1657, and the dictates of this work reveal to what degree French classicism was willing to modify the rules of classical tragedy to maintain the unities and decorum Dobignac for example saw the tragedies of Oedipus and Antigone as unsuitable for the contemporary stage. Although Pierre Cornet continued to produce tragedies to the end of his life, the works of Jean Racine from the late 1660s on totally eclipsed the late plays of the elder dramatist. Racine's tragedies—inspired by Greek myths, Euripides, Sophocles and Seneca, condensed their plot into a tight set of passionate and duty-bound conflicts between a small group of noble characters, and concentrated on these characters' double binds and the geometry of their unfulfilled desires and hatreds. Racine's poetic skill was in the representation of pathos and amorous passion like Phedre's love for her stepson and his impact was such that emotional crisis would be the dominant mode of tragedy to the end of the century. Racine's two late plays, Esther and Athelie, opened new doors to biblical subject matter and to the use of theater in the education of young women. Tragedy in the last two decades of the century and the first years of the 18th century was dominated by productions of classics from Pierre Cornet and Racine, but on the whole the public's enthusiasm for tragedy had greatly diminished, theatrical tragedy paled beside the dark economic and demographic problems at the end of the century and the comedy of manners see below, had incorporated many of the moral goals of tragedy. Other later century tragedians include Claude Boyer, Michel Leclerc, Jacques Pradin, Jean Galbert de Campestron, Jean de la Chapelle, Antoine d'Aubigny de la Fosse, l'abbé Charles Claude Geniste, Prosper Joliet de Crébillon. At the end of the century, in the plays of Crébillon in particular, there occasionally appeared a return to the theatricality of the beginning of the century multiple episodes, extravagant fear and pity, and the representation of gruesome actions on the stage. Early French opera was particularly popular with the royal court in this period, and the composer Jean-Baptiste Lully was extremely prolific see the composer's article for more on court ballets and opera in this period. These musical works carried on in the tradition of tragicomedy especially the pieces of machines and court ballet, and also occasionally presented tragic plots or tragedies en musique. The dramatists that worked with Lully included Pierre Cornet and Molière, but the most important of these librettists was Philippe Quinault, a writer of comedies, tragedies, and tragicomedies. Comedy in the second half of the century was dominated by Molière. A veteran actor, master of farce, slapstick, the Italian and Spanish theatre see above, and regular theatre modelled on Plautus and Terence, Molière's output was large and varied. He is credited with giving the French Comedy of Manners, Comédie de Mowers, and the Comedy of Character, Comédie de Character, their modern form, his hilarious satires of avaricious fathers, Praesias's social parvenus, doctors and pompous literary types were extremely successful, but his comedies on religious hypocrisy, Tartuffe, and libertinage, Don Juan, brought him much criticism from the church, and Tartuffe was only performed through the intervention of the king. Many of Molière's comedies, like Tartuffe, Don Juan, and the La Misanthrope, 
could veer between farce and the darkest of dramas, and the endings of Don Juan and the misanthrope are far from being purely comic. Comedy to the end of the century would continue on the paths traced by Molière, the satire of contemporary morals and manners and the regular comedy would dominate, and the last great comedy of Louis XIV's reign, Alain René Lesage's Turcaret, is an immensely dark play in which almost no character shows redeeming traits. Select list of French theater after 1659. Molière, pseudonym of Jean Baptiste Poquelin, 1622-1673. Les Précieuses Ridicules, comedy, 1659. L'École des Femmes, comedy, 1662. Tartuffe au Lampostor, comedy, 1664. Don Juan au La Festin de Pierre, comedy, 1665. Le Misanthrope, comedy, 1666. Le Vert, comedy, 1668. Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme, comedy, 1670. Les Forberies de Scapin, comedy, 1671. Les Femmes Savantes, comedy, 1672. Le Malade Imaginaire, comedy, 1673. Thomas Cornet, 1625 to 1709, brother of Pierre Cornet. Timocrate, Tragedy, 1659, the longest run, 80 nights, recorded of any play in the century. Ariane, Tragedy, 1672. Circe, Tragicomedy, 1675, Coritan with Denot de Visse. La Divineries, Comedy, 1679, Coritan with Denot de Visse. Bellerophon, Opera, 1679. Philippe Quinault, 1635 to 1688. Alcest musical tragedy 1674 Proserpine musical tragedy 1680 Amadis de Gaulle musical tragicomedy 1684 based on the Renaissance chivalric novel Armide musical tragicomedy 1686 based on Tasso's Jerusalem delivered Jean Racine 1639 to 1699 Andromaque tragedy 1667 Les Plaidors, comedy, 1668, Racine's only comedy. Berenice, tragedy, 1670. Bajazet, tragedy, 1672. Iphigenie, tragedy, 1674. Phaedre, tragedy, 1677. Britannicus, tragedy, 1689. Esther, tragedy, 1689. Athalie, tragedy, 1691. Jacques Pradin, 1632 to 1698. Pyramé et Thisbe, tragedy, 1674. Tamerlan, Ola la mort de Bajazet, tragedy, 1676. Phèdre et Hippolyte, tragedy, 1677. This play, released at the same time as Racine's, had a momentary success. Jean François Regnard, 1655 to 1709. La Jouet, comedy, 1696. Le Destray, comedy, 1697. Jean Galbert de Campestron, 1656 to 1723. Andronic, tragedy, 1685. Tiradate, tragedy, 1691. Florent Carton Dancourt, 1661 to 1725. Le Chevalier à la mode, comedy, 1687. Les Bourgeoises à la mode, comedy, 1693. Les Bourgeoises de Qualité, Comedy, 1700. Alain René Lesage, 1668 to 1747. Comedy, 1708. Prosper Joliot de Crébillon, 1674 to 1762. Idomene, Tragedy, 1705. Atre et Thyest, Tragedy, 1707. Electra, Tragedy, 1709. Radamist et Cianobi, Tragedy, 1711. Xerxes, Tragedy, 1714. Semiramis, Tragedy, minus 1717. Topic: 18th century. Jean-François Regnard, Voltaire, Oedipus, 1718. Mariamne, 1724. Arifile, 1732. 
Zaire 1732 Muhammad 1741 Marope 1743 La Princesse de Navarre 1745 Nanine 1749 Lorfalin de la Chine 1755 Marivo Denis Diderot Beaumarchais Eugenie 1767 Les Dur Amos 1770 Terrare 1787 La Barbier de Seville ou la Precaution Inutile 1775 La Folle Journey ou la Mariage de Figaro 1778 L'autre tartuffe au la mire coupable 1792 Jean Baptiste Louis Gresset Le Mechant. The philosopher Jean Jacques Rousseau in addition to writing several dramatic works also considered the theater's relation to politics and society in his letter to M D Alembert on spectacles Topic 19th century The major battle of Romanticism in France was fought in the theatre. The early years of the century were marked by a revival of classicism and classical-inspired tragedies, often with themes of national sacrifice or patriotic heroism in keeping with the spirit of the revolution, but the production of Victor Hugo's Hernani in 1830 marked the triumph of the Romantic movement on the stage a description of the turbulent opening night can be found in Théophile Gautier. The dramatic unities of time and place were abolished, tragic and comic elements appeared together and metrical freedom was won. Marked by the plays of Friedrich Schiller, the Romantics often chose subjects from historic periods the French Renaissance, the reign of Louis XIII of France and doomed noble characters rebel princes and outlaws or misunderstood artists Vinny's play based on the life of Thomas Chatterton. By the middle of the century, theatre began to reflect more and more a realistic tendency, associated with naturalism. These tendencies can be seen in the theatrical melodramas of the period and, in an even more lurid and gruesome light, in the Grand Guignol at the end of the century. In addition to melodramas, popular and bourgeois theatre in the mid-century turned to realism in the well-made Bourgeois farces of Eugene Marin Labiche and the moral dramas of Émile Aguirre, also popular were the operettas, farces and comedies of Ludovic Halevy, Henri Maylock, and, at the turn of the century, Georges Fado. Before the war, the most successful play was Octave Mirbeau's great comedy Les Affaires sont les Affaires Business is Business 1903. The poetry of Baudelaire and much of the literature in the latter half of the century or fin de siècle were often characterized as «decadent» for their lurid content or moral vision, but with the publication of Jean Moréa's «Symbolist Manifesto» in 1886, it was the term symbolism which was most often applied to the new literary environment. Symbolism appeared in theatre in the works of writers Villiers de Lille Adam and Maurice Maeterlinck among others. <laughs> 20th century. The most significant dramatist of turn of the century France was Alfred Jerry. The impact of his plays, primarily UBU Roy, was writ large upon contemporary audiences and has continued to be a major influence on, among others, Monty Python's Flying Circus and The Young Ones. Avant garde theatre in France after World War I was profoundly marked by Dada and surrealism. The Surrealist movement was a major force in experimental writing and the international art world until the Second World War, and the Surrealist's technique was particularly well suited for poetry and theatre, most notably in the theatrical works of Antonin Artaud and Guillaume Apollinaire. Theatre in the 1920s and 1930s went through further changes in a loose association of theatres called the cartel. Around the directors and producers Louis Jouvet, Charles Dullin, Gaston Beatty, and Ludmila and Georges Piteff, they produced French works by Jean Giraudoux, Jules Romans, Jean Anouilly and Jean-Paul Sartre, as well as Greek and Shakespearean plays and works by Luigi Pirandello, Anton Chekhov, and George Bernard Shaw. Inspired by the theatrical experiments in the early half of the century and by the horrors of the war, the avant-garde Parisian theatre, New Theatre, termed the Theatre of the Absurd, by critic Martin Eslin in reference to Eugene Ionesco, Samuel Beckett, Jean Genet, Arthur Adamov, Fernando Arable refused simple explanations and abandoned traditional characters, plots, and staging. Other experiments in theatre involved decentralization, regional theatre, popular theatre, 
Designed to bring the working class to the theater, Brechtian theater, largely unknown in France before 1954, and the productions of Arthur Adamov and Roger Planchin. The Avignon Festival was started in 1947 by Jean Villar, who was also important in the creation of the Théâtre National Populaire, or TNP. The events of May 1968 marked a watershed in the development of a radical ideology of revolutionary change in education, class, family and literature. In theatre, the conception of «Creation Collective» developed by Ariane Minochkine's Théâtre du Soleil refused division into writers, actors and producers. The goal was for total collaboration, for multiple points of view, for an elimination of separation between actors and the public, and for the audience to seek out their own truth. See also Category – French dramatists and playwrights Category – French plays <laughs>